Hi, everyone. I am Dr. Arame Enverizade. I am a COTAD founder as well as the current COTAD vice chair. I run the COTAD chapters as well as organize the COTAD toolkit. And I am Jessica Olson. I'm a second year student at Georgia State Occupational Therapy Program, and um, I am the chair of COTAD um, um, chapter for GSU. COTAD, the Coalition of Occupational Therapy Advocates for Diversity, was an organization that started now about five years ago, six years ago. <laughs> I don't even know what day it is anymore. Um, but we were a group of emerging leaders that just happened to meet in, um, in, our, in our cohort, and some were in different cohorts. But we were discussing the Centennial Vision, and we were, we were, and it was, let me say, it was about 2013, 2014, we were discussing the Centennial Vision, and we knew that it was 2017 was coming soon. And there were parts of the Centennial Vision that we felt were really, you know, being accomplished, evidence-based, um, driven, and we really wanted to look at the diversity piece of that vision and say, how are we meeting that, um, and will it be accomplished by 2017? And Dr. Amy Lamb, she was wonderful. She's, we were we were sitting down at a at a leadership meeting, you know, a leadership reception, just a few of us. Uh, and um, we were, she said, we said, hey, you know, we're really interested in really addressing the Centennial Vision or looking at the Centennial Vision diversity piece. She said, well, why don't you guys present at the next conference? And uh, you can't tell that to a group of emerging leaders who are on fire. So that next conference, we definitely did a presentation about diversity in the workforce and the importance of um, diversity in the student body. And it just caught, like, it just went wild. Everybody that had to do something or it was interested in diversity kind of approached us. And it was very, very grassroots efforts to of that. Um, out of the passion to really see how are we addressing the Centennial Vision and really now Vision 2025. So that's a little bit of the history and there were five of us, five, six of us that were that were the founders and really um, now has taken our organization to become a nonprofit and um, very, very um, um, passionate about diversity, equity and inclusion efforts initiatives. So that's the, that's the story. Recently we revamped the mission and we love it right now, our new mission. It really encapsulates who we are. And we really want to empower occupational therapy leaders to engage in practices that increase diversity, equity, and inclusion for a more transformative occupational therapy profession. And um, we, our vision is a future in which occupational therapy is accessible, inclusive, and effective for all. And so our mission, although it seems, you know, we, we shortened it because it was so long, we wanted to make it very concise, but we're very, very um, focused on how are we going to really engage in ways to increase diversity, equity, inclusion. COTAB, you know, we, we have our founders who are now really part of the executive board. Um, and that, that is, those are the individuals who we've been part of COTAD since the beginning. And now we also have board members, which are our wonderful, wonderful um, leaders who really help run our other programs and our, really our initiatives. Like, and I can explain a little bit more about the, the programs later if you like, um, but those are our board members. And then we have our volunteers and our volunteers help with other events and activities and, and whatnot. So we're gonna have a membership rollout coming summer 2020. And it was supposed to be spring, but with COVID and everything, we may have to do it summer 2020 and really talk about the different membership levels and the opportunities to get involved. But that's kind of the structure right now is we have our board members, executive board members and our board members and our volunteers, which we really love and really excited about. It's one big COTED family really. So our schools, now this is a whole nother piece because that's like the apple of my eye. I'm so proud of our schools and I don't want to take any shine for what Jessica's going to say because she, her, her and her chapter have done a wonderful job. But the COTAD chapters, now when we're looking at how our organization is structured, if you would like me to share that right now, I can. Um, we have our vision, our mission and vision. And, and recently in October, we had our first strategic planning retreat because we became a nonprofit. And, you know, we're really developing and, and really looking at how our strategic plan is going to um, really take, take an effect. And what, what we've done is 
like I told you, when we first started, everyone was coming to us about anything related to diversity, diversity, diversity. It was before people started using the terms equity and inclusion. So anything diversity related, they're like, Kotak, Kotak. So we really needed to create some, create some focus. And we created these anchors, these pillars of what our organization represents. And um, one of them is the Kotak chapters. So um, some of the programs that we have are Kotak Ed, which is really looking at how do we support academia to really focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we have wonderful people who are involved in fact for for faculty members and um, professors and really really involved in Cotet Ed and how we can push the 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 initiatives in academia and then we have our minority mentorship program which is a wonderful program really looking at representation and why mentorship matters but as well as why representation matters and a lot of times when students graduate or new practitioners um, are are starting to figure out their trajectory you know uh, oftentimes they need mentorship right and mentorship is is key and to have a mentor that looks like you or represents you or can really you can relate to is something that's very powerful so that's our minority mentorship program and then this cotat uh, chapters this cotat chapters is like my baby and i love it you know cotat chapters is our student engagement piece and it really looks at how do we have students become more culturally responsive practitioners more uh, culturally uh, pr pr practice cultural humility cultural fluidity and how do we really start having these conversations and dialogues now um, and students are really mobilize the students to be grassroots and leaders in this work. And the students to we, you know, we had this idea almost a year and a half, two years ago, about, you know, every cotet, every school should have a cotet chapter. It was a vision I had. And one of my amazing students, Whitney Harris at the time, um, at what university I was teaching at also kind of wanted to do something similar we were like boom so that was the first cotet chapter and i think it was i could say maybe two years ago now solid now we have about over 50 cotet chapters so that shows me and i want to be very clear also with ota schools um, wanting to have cotet chapters so ot and ota is really awesome and i want to be be clear that there sh this means that there is a need that students want to have these conversations and so my job here is to really facilitate them and empower them but the students have done a marvelous job of being grassroots and the goal is once they graduate that they have an organization that they can transition into that when they graduate this work and this passion that they have around diversity equity and inclusion doesn't just get lost so i have to go start my new job and i don't know where to go no you have a mentorship program now you can get involved in other pillars and anchors of our our organization so we want to continue this work um, and really um, empower our students to to really um, engage in um, these efforts and so that's the Cotet chapters and very very proud of it like I said and then we have Cotet community which is our recent our newest uh, pillar which is really how are we supporting diversity equity and inclusion efforts within our communities and the two people the people who are running these uh, the Cotet community were previous chairs who are now alumni and graduated from their universities. So again, that sustainability, that transition into honing leadership skills and is very, very important to us as we're grooming and mentoring our students. Um, and we're trying to educate, trying to really mentor them in the power of um, doing research and doing presentations and gathering outcome measures when it comes to this work. So, um, so that's our Cotec community and we had our first we were gonna have our first community event in Boston during AOTA, which had to get canceled, but we didn't necessarily cancel it because all the things that we raised and gathered for these, for our organization that we were donating to, we did provide provide to them. So that was exciting. So that's Cotec community. And overall, we do a lot of advocacy work um, with like the OTD mandates and looking at the vision 2025 and, and looking at the word, making sure the word inclusive is incorporated in it. So a lot of different work that we do as far as advocacy as well. Um, so that's COTAT. So our chapters are part of our family and they're the student engagement piece of what we do. So that's kind of how it's aligned. You had, you had asked um, how we got started with, with COTAD at GSU, and um, it was a, really, it was a woman in the cohort above mine last year um, who started it, and she started in October. Um, her name is Natalie Cuestas, and um, she recognized that there was a disparity between the diversity of the diverse cultures represented in Atlanta, which is just very di diverse, and the population that's represented at, in the GSU's OT classrooms. And and um, it became a goal of hers to bring more awareness of OT as a profession to a, a broader community in Atlanta. 
and, and also to, to increase the diversity of our program. Um, and she wanted to also encourage like the cultural awareness of the OT students that are, that are currently there. Uh, but she, I believe she had heard of COTAD through a conference. Um, and then she just, you know, researched COTAD and realized her goals and, and their ideals aligned with hers. And that just really motivated her to reach out and start the first chapter in Georgia. Well, um, how it's impacted it, it's like, like you said, it hasn't been very long, um, but we have been able to get in a few activities before COVID-19 shut us down. Um, so some of the things that, that I've wanted to work on now um, is cultural awareness with the OT students. And um, so I was able to partner with the Multicultural Center at GSU, and we hosted a workshop called Off the Wall, and we were able to explore and identify our use of stereotypes in daily conversations and activities. And that was just a really wonderful workshop where, you know, we got to have like deep conversations about these things. Um, and then I also hosted a, a potluck called Cookies, Coffee and Culture, Stories of Celebration. And this is where uh, we had students bring in um, desserts or something like that from a celebration. It could be from their own or something that you know, they were interested in another culture they were interested in. And uh, we just discussed about like how that, um, the significance of the tradition of that dessert or that celebration, how that affected that culture's health and their well being. So again, just trying to increase like awareness of different cultures that are around us. And then uh, we also had um, a virtual cultural movie night recently um, so with COVID-19 and had to go virtual, but we discussed um, class diversity on um, the film Parasite and how that impacted the characters' roles, their habits, their rituals, and ultimately their quality of life. And we discussed how as OTs we could potentially support um, people like the you know the the characters in the movie uh, eventually when we're you know done and graduated um but uh so we, i've been focusing a lot on cultural awareness since we are so new but in the future i do plan on increasing a, um, awareness of ot as a profession to high school students around atlanta so i would like to um create a presentation, I guess, for, for um, high schools and um, go to high schools and just discuss about how um, awesome OT can be for them. And then we're, we're also, um, SOTA, which we're under, COTAD is under SOTA at my school. Um, we're, we're trying to start a pre-OT club for GSU students. So I would also like to collaborate with, with that club in, in uh, recruiting diverse students and just increasing awareness of OT, um, our, our program's visibility you know, at GSU. Something that's really great that the COTAD organization does is we have these quarterly calls where we can collaborate with, with other COTAD chapters and get ideas. And so that's also has, that's been super helpful for someone like me who I'm just doing this all on my own, you know, so I need ideas from other people. So that's been, that's been helpful and support, like they're very supportive of us. Well, I just, um, I invite everybody um, in all of our words to come and participate. Um, and it, like I said, COTAD is a part of SOTA for in our um, school. I don't, I believe some in other schools it's separate, but with our school, it's, under SOTA. So whoever's a SOTA member can come and um, participate in, in these workshops that we have or the events that we have. So um, everyone is, is welcome. And Yeah, absolutely. So we like to differentiate like that because, um, you know, that's why COTAD is the organization, the chapters have their own way of, you know, creating their membership. So we want to make sure that it's clear like that, but if you want to join COTAD as an organization, um, we do have membership, and I mentioned the membership rollout program that we're going to be having summer 2020, but if you would like to find out more information, our website, COTAD.org, has a section on it where, um, what is it called right now? It's get involved, uh, and so there's ways that you can learn about how to get involved. You can also 
email cotad2015 at gmail.com and say you may be interested in becoming a board member. Um, or you can also volunteer, but being a board, board member means you can be able to sit on committees and whatnot. And one of the things we're very excited that we're gonna be starting is cotad research. And Jessica kind of spoke to it a little bit, but because we've been getting a lot of inquiries about research or being capstone, doing a capstone with COTAD, or just our own research that we want to do in diversity, equity, and inclusion, we're going to start a new anchor called COTAD Research. So if anybody is also interested in that, that's something that we're going to be really excited about launching very soon. So members can be involved in that work as well. Um, to start a COTAD chapter, which is exciting, I can't even keep up. Like every day there's somebody emailing about starting a COTAD chapter, which is exciting, but it means like I need to be, have more of me. So we have a committee that's being established to really respond to yeah, universities and programs that hear about us, but the first thing that you need to do is to complete a needs assessment. So once you email me, I will send you a needs assessment to really to see, like, is there a need? Do people in your program want to see this work happen? You might be, you know, the student may be interested who emailed me, but there might not be a big response. Luckily, there's an amazing response that everybody has have, have demonstrated when they do the needs assessment or survey. So that's that. And then once you get you submit the survey back to me, then you have a commitment started is who will be your chair or your co-chair, who will be your faculty liaison to support you within your program, um, who will, uh, what will your goals be? And then also your dues, which are the annual dues of $100. And then, uh, you know, you submit your commitment form. We get on a one-on-one -on -one call. We talk about the next steps. You get access to the benefits of being involved in COTAT. Like Jessica said, also being having access to these quarterly calls that we host, which we just had one um, a few weeks ago, which was awesome. It was awesome because people were able to share some of the work that they've done in COVID and how they're continuing their, their events. Like Jessica said, virtual something, what did you say, virtual, virtual something. movie night, yeah. yeah, virtual movie night, which was awesome, um, so I'm telling you, the OT and people are coming out, because they're being really creative, so uh, we want to make our steps very easy, needs assessment, commitment form, one-on-one -on -one with me, to really introduce you to COTAD, and um, get you connected to the additional benefits that you receive for being a COTAD, COTAD chapter, um, so yeah, and then after somebody is getting ready to graduate or finish their commitment, like when Jessica does, we want to make sure there's sustainability. So we um, touched base with Jessica, like for example, using Jessica, Jessica and the new person that will be taking over her role and have a transition, a transition meeting. And that's something that we've noticed that will really help with the sustainability of making sure the chapters stay strong within their programs. So very easy and I try to remove myself so it could be grassroots and the students can really lead um, based on the needs of their program and I'm here to just facilitate and guide as needed. So not really trying to micromanage, but let them really be creative and, and, and do the amazing work that they, that they wanna do. Even though it's hard, um, we want them to know that they're part of a family and a larger community and that we support them. So yeah, that's that. Oh, so I have to do this plug. Go on our Instagram, <laughs> I guess, um, if you want to learn more information about some of the work that's happening with the chapters and COTAD. Um, it's COTAD underscore diversity. Um, and then we have a Facebook page in COTAD.org. You can learn more about our organization called COTAD State. <laughs> and it's a state initiative to really address the exact thing you just asked us. How do we really um, collaborate with, you know, during state association, state conferences, really being present and um, really discussing and sharing what COTAD is at these state levels and these conferences that are happening at state levels. So that's also a rollout and we're creating a manual so that anybody who may be a COTAD member in that state can go and represent and really share COTAD and hopefully get other people involved and spread the good work. So it's coming, so many things are happening. You know, yeah, it's funny cool. because we are a volunteer organization. People think we may have an office, but we've been doing work virtual before COVID even happened. And so we've, we've been able to grow and be successful because we just take initiative of like, yeah, this is a project and we wanna do it, but we also have full-time jobs too. So we just really try to prioritize our projects and really get them off the ground. So that is the next big one, Cotet State, along with our Cotet research.